Good evening, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 10.5, Metric Measures. Our essential question is how can you compare and convert metric units? Please turn in your Go Math book to lesson 10.5. I'm going to take a moment, boys and girls, and introduce you to this table right here. This chart is going to help you understand that with the metric system, it's all based on the powers of 10. For example, this right here is our basic unit, meters, liters, and grams. Meters measures length, liters measures capacity, and grams measures weight. Now I want you to focus on this portion of the chart. This is the left side of my basic unit. I want you to understand that every place to the left of my basic unit will be 10 times greater, a deca, meter, or liter or gram is 10 times greater than your basic unit. A hectometer, liter or gram will be 100 times greater than your basic unit. And a kilometer or a kiloliter or a kilogram will be 1,000 times greater than your basic unit because it's all based on the powers of 10. So it'll be 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times greater than your basic unit. And just like we went to the left, it was 10 times greater, I want you to understand that everything to the right of your basic unit will be 10 times smaller. A decimeter, or liter, or gram is 10 times smaller than your basic unit. A centimeter, centiliter, or centigram will be 100 times smaller than your basic unit. And a millimeter, or a milliliter, or a milligram will be 1,000 times smaller than your basic unit. It'll be 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times smaller. So let's go ahead and begin question two. It says 6,500 centiliters is equal to how many liters? So let's go ahead and find CL on our chart. I see the C with the L. That stands for centiliters. Now I want to see 6,500 centiliters is equal to how many liters? I know that centiliters are smaller than liters, but how much smaller? Let's find out. My liters are here. They're 10 times, 100 times smaller. Now, because I have 6,500 centiliters, and I want to know how many liters it equals, I want to go from a smaller unit to a larger. In class, we learned when you go from a small unit to a large unit, you divide. So I'm going to divide. Now let's see by how much. I can see that my centiliters is 1 power 10, 2 power 10 smaller. Therefore, I'm going to divide by 1 power 10, 2 powers of 10, or 10, 100. So I'm going to divide by 100, also known as the second power of 10. So 6,500 divided by 100, I'm going to divide. Now remember in class we talked about how when you multiply, you move the decimal to the right. When you divide, you move the decimal to the left. Because I have two zeros here, or two is my power of 10, I'm going to move my decimal two places to the left. When you divide, you move your decimal to the left, and we're going to move it two places. So it goes right behind the 5. So it would be 65 liters. Let's use the same strategy for number 3. It says 15 centimeters is equal to how many millimeters? Now I can look at my chart down here and I can see that centimeters is greater than millimeters by 1 power of 10, also known as greater by 10. So we are going to go from a large unit to a smaller unit. When you go from large to small, you multiply. Remember in class when we pushed our arms way out far and then we came up to the middle and we said we multiply because we're going from a bigger unit to a smaller? We're going to multiply 15 times, and as you can see here, 1 power of 10, also known as 10. So 15 times 10 is 150. So I could say 15 centimeters is equal to 150 millimeters. So let's take a look at question number four. Question number four says 3,200 grams is equal to how many kilograms? 
Let's look at our chart and see where grams is. I see the gram as my base unit. And now let's look for a kilogram. I see kilogram would be right here. And remember, I told you earlier that each place to the left of my base unit will be 10 times greater. 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times greater than my base unit. Therefore, I know that a kilogram is 1,000 times greater than the gram. But what we need to know th is this, that I have 3,200 grams is equal to how many kilograms? Now, because I'm going from a smaller unit to a larger, we've learned in class when you go from a small to a large, you divide. So we have to see what we're dividing by. We're dividing by three powers of 10. One power of 10, two power of 10, three power of 10. So I'm dividing by 1,000. So my equation really is 3,200 divided by 1,000. And 3,200 divided by 1,000, well, let's do our chant. When you multiply, you move your decimal to the right. When you divide, you move your decimal to the left. We're going to move our decimal three places to the left. So we start right here. One place, two place, three places. So my decimal should be between my three and my two. So it's okay to say 3,200 grams is equal to three and two tenths kilograms. Now let's take a look at question number five. It says 12 liters is equal to how many milliliters? So let's find the L. The L is right here, and that means liters. So I have 12 liters, and I want to know how many milliliters it equals. So I'm going to go ahead and write 12 right here, and that shows me 12 liters. But now let's look and see what I'm going to multiply by. I want to multiply by my power of tens. I see my milliliter is down here, so I'm going to multiply by 10, 100, 1,000. Because when you go from a large unit to a small unit, you multiply. So I'm going to say 12 times 1,000. Because it's 10 times 10 times 10 times. All right, so that would equal 1,000 times smaller. Because every place to the right will be 10 times smaller. So we're going to multiply because when you go from a large to a small, you multiply. So 12 times 1,000 equals 12,000. So I would say 12 liters is equal to 12,000 milliliters. So for number 6, it says 200 centimeters equals how many meters? So let's find centimeters on my table. This is my centa, and because it says cm, this is my centa meters. So here's where my 200 centimeters are, and we want to know how many meters 200 centimeters equals. Now remember, when you go from a small to a large unit, you divide. So because I'm going to divide, I need to know what I'm dividing by. So let's go ahead and let's look for our centimeters right here, and our meters are right here. I'm going to divide by 1 power of 10, 2 powers of 10. Well, we all know 2 powers of 10 equals 100. Therefore, I'm going to divide by 100. And the reason why I'm dividing is because I'm going from a smaller to a larger. So I will divide. So my equation is 200 divided by 100 would equal 2. The answer would be 2 meters. And this does actually make sense because in real life when you have a meter stick and you have two meter sticks, the value would be 200 centimeters. So this is reasonable. Now let's look at number 7. It says 70,000 grams is equal to how many kilograms? Well I see kilo right here and I see grams right here. Now I see that my gram is smaller than my kilograms. So when I go from a small to a large, I need to divide. So I need to know what I'm dividing by. I'm going to divide by 1 power of 10, 2 powers of 10, 3 powers of 10. And so a 3 power of 10, we all have learned in the past, equals 1,000. 
So I need to divide by 1,000. So our equation would be 70,000 divided by 1,000. Well, remember, we had the chant that we learned at the beginning of the year. When you multiply, you move your decimal to the right, but when you divide, you'll move your decimal to the left. Let's see where we move our decimal to the left. I see my exponent is 3, and I also see three zeros in my 1,000. So my decimal point normally would be right here, but I'm going to move it three places to the left, because when you divide, you move your decimal to the left. One place, two places, three places. So my decimal needs to go behind this first zero. Therefore, 70,000 grams equals 70 kilograms. All right, let's skip down to number 10. And on number 10, we're going to compare by writing our inequalities of greater than, less than, or equal to. Now, as you can see, it says 900 centimeters and 9,000 millimeters. Let's take a look at our chart right here. I see my centimeters is here, and my millimeters would be here. And we are dealing with meters, so that will be length. So we want to know which is greater, 900 centimeters or 9,000 millimeters. Now if I look at my chart, I can see that centimeters are 10 times greater than millimeters. So I'm going to focus right here on my centimeters, and I'm going to go ahead and convert it to millimeters only. Because remember, when you want to compare, you want to convert them both to the same type of measurements. So let's go ahead and focus on my 900 centimeters. If I want to convert it to millimeters, I know that it is 10 times greater than my millimeters. So I would have to do 900 times 10 because this base power of 10 is going to be 10 times greater. So 900 times 10 equals 9,000 millimeters. If I were to change my 900 centimeters into millimeters, it would equal 9,000 millimeters. Well, so does this. So we can all agree to say that 900 centimeters and 9,000 millimeters are equal to one another. So let's use our chart to help us compare on number 12. It says 5,000 centimeters and 5 meters. Now let's look and see which is greater, meters or centimeters. Well, if I look at my chart, I see meters right here, and I see centimeters right here. I can actually see that meters are 10 100 times greater than centimeters. Therefore, I can go ahead and convert my meters to centimeters. Now let's look and see again. When you go from a large unit to a small, remember we talked about how you multiply. Remember how we stretched our arms out wide and we said from a large to a small, you multiply. But let's see what we're multiplying it by. We're starting here at meters and we're going to multiply by 10, 100. We're going to multiply 5 meters times 100. 5 times 100 would equal 500, and we have changed it to centimeters. Therefore, I can now compare 5,000 centimeters, 500 centimeters. Obviously, we know 5,000 centimeters is greater than 5 meters. For number 16, it says Priya ordered 145 centimeters of fabric. Jaylene ordered 1 and 5 tenths meters of fabric. Who ordered more fabric? Well, we can use our chart to figure this out. But we have to decide to convert them both to the same type of measurement. So I want to go ahead and convert them both to centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and change Jaylene's to centimeters so I can compare it to Bria's 145 centimeters. So let's go ahead and take our 1 and 5 tenths meters. I'm going to go ahead and write 1 and 5 tenths in meters. And I want to go ahead and figure out how do I convert it to centimeters. Let's look at our chart and see. Here's my meters. Here's my centimeters. I can see that my meters are 10, 100 times greater than centimeters. So that means if I'm going to go from a large unit to a small, I want to multiply. So my equation would be 1 and 5 tenths times 100 because it's 10 100 or 2 powers of 10. 
So my equation will be 1 and 5 tenths times 100. Now we've learned in the past with my little chant that I've taught you in class that when you multiply, you move your decimal to the right. And when you divide, you move your decimal to the left. So in this case, we're moving our decimal to the right. But remember, we on our chart went 1 power of 10, 2 power of 10s. So we're going to move our decimal two places to the right because when you multiply by 100, you're going to move your decimal to the right two places. So let's go ahead and look at 1 and 5 tenths, and I want to move my decimal two places to the right. One place, two places. We need to put an imaginary zero right here, and let's try this again, because remember, 5 tenths is the same as 50 hundredths. So let's move our decimal one place, two places. Therefore, my new decimal place should be right here. So now I would say that Jaylene ordered 150 centimeters of fabric. So who ordered more? Well, if Bria ordered 145 and Jaylene ordered 150 centimeters, obviously it would have to be that Jaylene ordered more. In fact, she ordered five more centimeters. And now we're on number 17. Now this one is actually a multi-step problem. Let's read it. It says Ed fills his sports bottle with one and two tenths liters of water. After his bike ride, he drinks 200 milliliters of the water. How much water is left in Ed's sports bottle? Well, as you can see, we have liters that he has in his bottle, but he drank milliliters. In order to do this effectively, I think we need to change it all to milliliters. So that way we can subtract. And the reason why I know we need to subtract is because he drinks the water and it asks how much water is left. And that's my clue to subtract. So step one is let's go ahead and convert our one and two tenths liters into milliliters. I'm gonna go ahead and write one and two tenths. Now I know that this is done in liters, and here are my liters right here. Now let's see what we're going to have to multiply by to find milliliters. Let's go ahead and check. My meters is 10, 100, 1000. And I know I am going to go from a larger unit to a smaller unit, therefore we know we have to multiply. So I need to multiply my 1 and 2 tenths by 1,000. Now remember we've learned in our chant, when you multiply, you move your decimal to the right. And how many places will we move it to the right? Well, we multiply by the third power of 10, which is 1,000. So that means I need to move my decimal three places to the right. So we're going to go one place, and then we're going to have to add two more zeros. So let's go ahead and do this again. One place, two place, three places. So here's my new decimal point. So my answer should be 1,200. Now that's what we are starting with now. That's how many milliliters are in his bottle. Ed has 1,200 milliliters in his bottle because we converted it to milliliters. He drinks 200 milliliters, so how much is left? Well, if you do the math along with me, you know he still has 1,000 milliliters left of water. All right, go ahead and turn your page to the back side, and you can see questions one and two. Now, I've provided for you the chart, just like what I've been using with you in this video, to help you with your powers of 10. Go ahead and work these two questions out carefully, as well as do questions three through six. And at the top of your page, please put down if you're level one, a novice, two, apprentice, three, practitioner, or four, expert. And we will be practicing in class tomorrow to get extra good at this topic of converting metric units. I'll see you tomorrow in class. Have a great night.